Hi, this is Steve, K-A-B-Z. How many times have you needed an end insulator for an antenna project and didn't have any on hand? Either had to order some online or wait for the next swap meet and uh, see if you could pick some up there. Most of the end insulators require soldering. Uh, if you've worked on antenna projects like me, you probably found that you calculated the length of the antenna, tried to figure out some way to measure it with your antenna analyzer or by using the SWR a meter on your rig before you actually stripped the end of the wire, put it through the end insulator and soldered it all together only to find out that it detuned the antenna and now some, somehow you have to figure out how to add some length to the antenna to retune it. Well I'm going to show you how to make an end insulator that doesn't require any soldering. You can tune it after you install the end insulator and it can easily be made uh, from easily obtainable products locally. This is the finished product of the end insulator. This uh, insulator is made from a half inch piece of PVC, six inches long. Uh, it's drilled with a uh, 964 inch drill bit that fits uh, number 14 AWG wire uh, perfectly. The far end, or the end of the insulator, just has a piece of electric fence wire, and I'll show you in the photos how this is made and is attached to the end and then on this end usually I just use a snap swivel that you pick up at a hardware store and tied to a piece of Dacron cord uh, on the end. Now I, I use these end insulators on field day antennas for 20 and 15 meters. I also use it on the end of my inverted L, my transmit antenna, for 160 meters. Uh, being held by friction there's no soldering involved and uh, the big advantage, huge advantage to this, is you cut your antenna, as always, several inches longer than is calculated for the length of your antenna. Leave several inches of the end of the antenna extending out the far end of the end insulator. And then you can trim this as needed to tune it for the lowest SWR on the frequency that you're going to be using and you don't have to solder and desolder and or calculate the length, try to measure it without putting an insulator on and then once you think you've got it right, strip the end, solder the end insulator on and then find out that it detuned your antenna. Leave this sticking out and you can trim it maybe one inch at a time if it's a 40 meter antenna or a 20 meter antenna. Uh, if it's a dipole, you want to trim an equal length off each end as you do it. Check it with your antenna analyzer or if you don't have one just check it with the SWR meter on your rig and uh, you don't have to detach it when you're done. If you find you didn't leave enough sticking out you can just re-weave some additional length through the end insulator to give you a little more length. When you're all done, if you don't like this end sticking out, you can weave it back through the end insulator. This will not ever pull out of there. Uh, so we're going to show you how to make this end insulator. You can do it in just a few minutes with a piece of PVC and a drill. To make the end insulator, we first cut a 6 inch piece of 1 half inch PVC. At the uh, 2 inch mark, uh, we only drill through one side of the PVC. The same is true at the 5 inch mark. At the 3 and 4 inch marks, we're going to drill all the way through the PVC. At the 1 inch mark, we're also going to drill all the way through the PVC, but it's going to be at a 90 degree angle to the other holes uh, in the PVC. Here's a view of the PVC with all the holes drilled. The holes on the end are only drilled through one side of the PVC. The two uh, holes in the middle are drilled all the way through. This view shows the hole at the 1 inch mark that's drilled all the way through at uh, a 90 degree angle to the other holes. For the wire that's used for the halyard attachment, uh, I actually used electric fence wire that I had on hand. Uh, I'm not sure, it's probably uh, 12 or 14 gauge wire. Uh, you can either put a couple of nails in a vise and use for a bending jig or you can just bend it uh, easily with pliers. This just shows the shape uh, that I bend that uh, halyard attachment wire in. Uh, this uh, connects through the hole that's drilled in the PVC at a 90 degree angle to the rest of the holes. 
After inserting the free end of the halyard attachment wire uh, through the PVC, you can either reach in with needle nose pliers and crimp them over. Uh, the, the free ends of those wires extend out the open end or toward the open end of the PVC. And needle nose pliers or a thin screwdriver in there can be used to bend those wires over and that will hold it uh, securely in place so it can't detach. This is just another view showing the halyard attachment uh, wire uh, after it's connected to the uh, free end of the PVC. Now we're ready to attach the end of the antenna wire. Uh, you might want to put a slight upward bend in the end of the wire to feed it through the first hole. Uh, and then you pull enough wire through to where you can weave it through the remaining holes in the PVC. After you've fed the antenna wire down through the last hole in the PVC that's only drilled through one side, then you just feed the end of the wire out the open end of the PVC uh, next to the halyard attachment wire. And make sure you leave enough uh, so you can trim the antenna for resonance. Here's a view of the completed end insulator after the antenna wire has been installed. We'll show a couple of views of the completed end insulator with the halyard attached. I just use a snap swivel and some cord uh, on the end of the insulator to support the antenna. Make sure you leave enough uh, wire out the end of the insulator to be able to trim for resonance at your desired frequency. Uh, these work very well. Uh, there's no solder involved and you can easily uh, if it's a dipole, for example, you can trim a little bit off each end uh, if you make sure you leave a little extra length. Uh, I usually calculate the length and then add about uh, a foot just to be on the safe side and then use the antenna analyzer or your SWR meter on your radio to find the resonant frequency and then snip a little bit off each end if it's a dipole and uh, see how far it actually moves the resonant frequency and then you can judge whether you can actually cut more than an inch off at a time or if you want to go less than an inch. It works very well. I uh, hope you enjoy and find it useful. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.